hello, hello, guys. Hi, welcome back with, I guess, sort of season two premiere of Dub Survive, even though it's not going to be any different. It's still going to be the unscripted, um, not even edited, really, because I'm a terrible person, um, discussion where I rant about anime for 20 minutes, and maybe we have a laugh or you guys cringe at me and make fun of me. Either way, it's going to be a fun laugh. So, before I get to the topic of today's discussion, I should point out this is not what we were originally going to talk about. You see, the theme for this month was going to be anime based on fighting games. EVA was going to be this month, you see, but unfortunately it became yet another victim on the long, long list of cancel culture bullshit. But I heard the head of EVA was, um, apparently it's true? I don't know, I didn't look much into this story. <sighs> Point is, though, canceling the whole event seems a bit much to me, but what can you do, I suppose? Either way, though, fuck cancel culture. I'm sure some of you out there can at least agree with me on that. It's getting out of hand, in my opinion. So, instead of looking at anime based on fighting games, fuck it, I don't care, we're gonna cover anime that focuses predominantly on fighting for a little bit. Thus, we have the topic of today's discussion, Levius. An anime I was thinking would probably be nothing more than a Megalobox clone, since it's heavily themed about around, I should say. Um boxing, but with, I guess, augments. You'll understand more when I get to it, but this show manages to stand on its own and is actually really damn good. And fortunately, I'm not the only one who thinks so, so I guess I won't get bullied too much for my opinion. Don't hurt me, I'm sorry if you don't like it. No, but... What is Levius, though? Let's get into that, shall we? Levius is a manga published by Iki Comics back in 2013 by Haruhisa Nakata until November 2014 where it was ended because Iki Comics went out of business. Does this have to happen every time we do one of these? Is, is that a thing? A company has to go under? Well, I guess it's not the anime publisher or distributor this time. Well... Ultra Jump would pick up the rights to Levius and launch it, I guess, a sort of sequel known as Levius Established, or as some people have labeled it, Levius Neo, in May 2015. And to my knowledge, it might still be going to this day. So, fast forward a few years, and we have Netflix. With their own ideas for Levius. They would outsource this anime to Polygon Pictures, the same people behind Knights of Sidonia and Netflix's recent work, Drifting Dragons. Something I might touch up on in a little bit. By a little bit, I mean another episode. I should probably verify that a little more. Either way, though, Levius would begin streaming on Netflix all 12 episodes and sub and dub on November 28, 2019. Just last year! <laughs> it's so new! Yes, so old at the same time. <laughs> so, plot breakdown time. Obvious takes place in a post-war 1800s era, where we have decided to utilize the ability of steam, steampunk setting. And through this steam, we use it to enhance prosthetic limbs and armor, so to speak for the sport of boxing. They obviously used this sort of thing in the war, but since then they thought they could use it to enhance boxing, thus dubbing it metal boxing. So you'd basically replace your arm with an auto male arm and it would give you super strength and, or enhanced strength, I should say, as well as contr limited control over steam. And you'd use this to box with. Our main character, Levius, who happened to lose some of his family in the war, enters metal boxing as a sort of way to cope and find his purpose. Realizing he has an innate talent for it, his uncle, Zax, yeah, that's his name, Zach with an S at the end, I know, 
decides to become his coach. Then you have his sort of rival, Natalia, and his mechanic engineer, Bill, all supporting him to help him reach farther and farther towards the top. It's honestly, again, pretty good. What really makes this show shine is its characters. You see, the opponents Levius has to face aren't just generic boxers that are pricks for the sake of being antagonistic. You quickly find out during the fights that these are just normal people with their own goals and motivations too. Some of them might come across as complete, irrehensible people, but by the end of it, you see what led them down the dark road. Then you have others that come across as a prima donna in the spotlight, but it seemed like they had no choice but to do just that. It's actually really cool in my opinion. And then you have Dr. Clown, who would become the de facto, I guess, main antag of the first season. And he is so over the top and pretentious, it's amazing. I could see some people thinking it's a little too ridiculous, but I thought it was great. It was dumb anime bullshit, and I loved every second he was on screen. Because he is such a prick, yet it's it's so over the top. It's It's great. I'm not going to delve into any more stuff with these characters, though, because that would be spoilery, and I don't want to do that. So, when it comes to the animation, it's done by Polygon, and I already heard mixed things about Knights of Sidonia's animation, so this isn't really much different, though I did hear a lot of people say this was one of Polygon's highlights. Um, Levius, I mean. That once you get used to the art style and the animation style, you'll get really into it. As far as the music, I enjoyed it. You've got a mix of classical pieces, upbeat symphonic pieces, and even some licensed songs here or there that I believe some of the boxers used as entrance music, so that was kind of cool. And the sound effects, for the most part, I feel were on point. Now, Let's get into why this is called Dumpster Dive. First, this was ADR directed by my man Todd Abercorn, which is quite interesting. I didn't know he ADR directed. I know someone's gonna point out, you dumbass, how'd you not know that? He ADR directed, uh, insert name here. Yeah, that's it. But seriously, I, it's kind of cool. So next we have Levius Cromwell voiced by Zach Aguilar, or most people probably know him as Tanjiro from Demon Slayer, or Koichi from Jojo, Diamond is Unbreakable. I don't think he's going anywhere anytime soon, by the way. <laughs> nah, but in all seriousness, I really do enjoy his acting. I think he's a very talented voice actor, and he does good as Levius. There were genuinely good moments with him when you see him have... I guess PTSD from remembering what happened during the war. I think he does a good job pulling those scenes off. Next, we have his uncle, Zach. Yeah, yeah, missed opportunity, guys. Could have had Zach Aguilar voice Zach. Voiced by Sean Burgos? Burgos? Uh, 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 okay, I'm sorry. I'm not good with names. Anyway, he has been mainly known to voice in games from when I looked up in actual cartoons. He was even in Assassin's Creed 3, of all things. And as the older mentor, who, by the way, I should point out, was a former boxer, which is why he's able to train Levius as well as he is, I think he does a great job here. You get a sense that he's a stern, caring, I guess, sort of father figure that really wants what's best for Levius. Next, we have Natalia, voiced by, oh no, another name I'm going to butcher, Julia um, McKilvain, who apparently was in a shit ton of cartoons, even in Kablam, as well as Final Fantasy XV. And fun fact, she's also married to Ray Chase, so that's kind of cool. Yeah, Netflix seemed to go all out for this dub getting A-list players, and again, it really shows. 
Natalia is no exception here with Julie McKilvane, if that is how you pronounce that, I'm sorry, doing an excellent job as her. Go away, pop up. You're ruining the moment. So Natalia is basically Levius's rival. He ended up beating her early on in his career when he started out, and she hangs around hoping for the next chance to fight him. But, of course, over the course of the series, their relationship goes from there. Next, we have the mechanic, or engineer, Bill. Voiced by Todd Abercorn, the man, the myth, the legend, who casted himself, you son of a bitch. I can't stay mad at you, Todd. I'm sorry, that the... You... You beautiful baby. <laughs> no, but in all seriousness, um, Todd does an excellent job as Bill here. He's the calm, stoic researcher engineer dude. He, he's also exposition dude. He's the one that tells you how everything works in this universe and so on and so forth. And I, I really like Todd's performance in this stuff. Next, we have the opponents. First, we have Malcolm. Voiced by Neil Kaplan, or most people probably know him as Madara. Or the man who started crying last year going, I'm sorry, but when I gave Vic Mignogna a piggyback at a con, I felt his boss on the back of my neck. Dude, beta move, man. Come on, beta move, good sir. But back to this, Malcolm was an excellent character, and Neil Kaplan... Uh, damn it, man, why'd you have to do that last year? You are an awesome VA, sir. You did great as Malcolm. That was an amazing performance. Moving on from him, we have Hugo, voiced by Jameson Price. Or most people probably know him right away as Chad from Bleach. The second Chad, I should stress. The one who was Chad for the most part. I think switched BAs a lot, which didn't he? He's also been in other works, such as Code Geass, and Naruto, and so on and so forth. And again, Hugo ended up becoming one of my other favorite characters. Despite the little screen time he got, I thought he was really well done. Next, we have AJ Langdon, voiced by Christine Marie Cabanos or Best Girl from Theater Alive, Marie Rose. She also voices Chiaki from Danganronpa. And again, do I need to say it? She did an amazing job in this English dub. And as far as the main antagonist himself, Dr. Clown, he is voiced by Trevor Duvall, another voice actor who is most known for cartoons and even works like my Little Pony. I, I had to crack up at that a little bit, not gonna lie. But, as I said, with how over-the-top this character is, he did an amazing job. A lot of these voice actors I either haven't heard in a very long time, or have never heard at all, to be honest. And I know some people are gonna shun me for saying such, but... Netflix really brought out their A-game here. There's even others like Julianne Taylor and Doug Airholes rounding out the dub cast. Netflix was hoping to strike gold with this, and it really shows. Unfortunately, this show only did run for 12 episodes, and as of right now, there is no word on a season 2. However, ratings were good, and everyone did seem to enjoy this one a lot, so I wouldn't be surprised if they greenlight it for season 2 at some point. As far as my thoughts on Levius, I have some minor gripes with it, but I'm still going to give this show a solid B, and I would say go watch it. It was one of those shows I watched the first four episodes and thought, okay, I'll come back to it later. When I started F5, I was thinking, okay, I'm just going to watch an episode or two and that's it. I ended up binging the other eight episodes I had left. Like I said, I really enjoyed this one. I will say, though, my only knock on the dub is... Uh, 
for some reason, there was a couple of episodes on Netflix. It could just be me, but maybe someone else can answer this too. Where the mics that they were using to record with sounded off. I most noticed this in episode 5. For some reason, their mics were cutting in and out every now and again. It was nothing that ruined the whole experience, but it was noticeable. And as far as double casting goes, you'll notice a little bit of it here or there, but from what I could tell, it wasn't that egregious as usual. It was just not as bad. So like I said, I'm giving this show a solid B. And yeah, I highly recommend watching Levius. I was pleasantly surprised by this one. I thought it would be one of those shows I'd watch only to forget all about it. But it was good. I liked it. And I believe it stands on its own for Megalobox as another modern augmented boxing anime. And I hope to see more of it in the future. All right, so spoiler time. I'm not going to go on this too long. But... This is kind of Levius' biggest problem and why I didn't rate it higher. So, it's Levius himself. You see, the thing with the show is it wants to treat Levius like an underdog. Hence, they keep harping on the fact he only has one prosthetic limb, where most of the other boxers have two. They keep saying how Levius is on the losing end of a fight when he goes into it, but the problem is... Levius never loses. Not once. At least in the runtime of the first season of the anime. Whether that changes in the future and or in the manga, I don't know. But from the standpoint of the anime, he doesn't lose a single fight. Oh sure, there are times when it looks like he might and he gets his ass kicked in a round. But every fight he has, he wins. And it's kind of hard to call him an underdog when he's considered a prodigy in other ways. In the very first couple of episodes, they say he rose through the boxing ranks faster than any other boxer to date. The way the boxing ranks work in this universe is it goes grade 5 to grade 1. Grade 1, I believe, is where all the champs are. And Levius broke the world record for rising from grade 5 to grade 3 in the fastest time without losing a single fight. You can't call someone an underdog while having them not lose even once. And even keep bringing up that point when he goes into a fight, saying, oh, well, he's about to fight Hugo, shouldn't he be worried? Oh, I don't know, Levius hasn't lost a fight yet. Well then, why should we be worried? If it wasn't for this one flaw, I would honestly have graded the show a lot higher. But it's hard to overlook. To be fair, I didn't notice this problem until after finishing the entire show and taking a look back at it. So chances are most people might overlook this. As far as some of the other things, again with Hugo, I really liked his character. Jameson Price did a great job as him, and having his warm-up fight, as it were, against Levius, he... How to explain this? He was getting ready to fight Levius, but he scheduled a sort of tune-up fight against AJ, or Christine Marie Cabanos' character. I wasn't expecting him to get his ass handed to him by Christine Marie Cabanos, or AJ in this case. Yeah, James Price got his ass handed to him by her. No, but I wasn't expecting Hugo to lose to her, and it was kind of unexpected. Maybe some people saw it coming, but I didn't. I, I don't know. I really enjoyed that. It was unexpected. I thought, because Hugo was like, watch this fight, Levius, and you'll see what you're up against. So I thought it was going to be a one-shot thing, and then they were going to like, we can't win now. What are we going to do? But no, it, it actually went against expectations. And then you have Malcolm, who is someone who fought dirty. You know, he does all the dirty stuff, um, low blows, elbows and stuff like that that you're not supposed to do in boxing and by the end of it you find out why and his backstory I felt made sense however at the same time it's a little odd because Malcolm is someone who literally moited people in the ring 
Yeah, yeah. He defeated his opponents by cadabbering them, if you catch my drift. And it's kind of hard to make that guy sympathetic. I mean, it almost works. Like I said, I do like Malcolm as a character. I think it would have worked if they just said he critically injured them. You know, made it so they could never box again. Did irreparable damage. But he actually murdered five people. It states it in the anime. And it's like, wait. He legit did that. Then how are we supposed to sympathize with him? Sure, his backstory is tragic. But I don't know. As far as Dr. Clown goes. Yeah. He was pretentious. And I know some people won't get behind that. Because for a show that was trying, at least for the most part, to have well-rounded characters that were complex, just to throw this at you, a guy who seems to be evil for the sake of being evil because he's a dick, it might put some people away. But like I said, I love over-the-top dumb stupidity, so I had fun with it. I could go into the other stuff about how there is organizations manipulating stuff behind the scenes, but I feel like if the show gets a season two, it might delve more into that. As far as the other characters go, such as Zach, Bill, and Natalia, the show did a good job making them all incredibly likable. And the relationships between the characters is all believable, and it works. Season 2 premiere and the phone's part of the dumpster dive. Well, it's alright. It's getting ready to wrap this up anyways. <laughs> of course. Uh, wouldn't it be a fun time without that, right? But anyways, guys, thank you all so much for watching. Like I said, I give this show a solid B, and I highly recommend watching it. Please go watch it, guys. And if you have any shows you'd like us to cover, please let me know down below in the comments if there's anything on your mind. And maybe we'll cover it at some point. Who knows? And, yeah. As far as for Levius, leave your thoughts below. Let me know what you thought of it, guys. Did you like it? Or did you hate it more than I did? I don't know. But hopefully you all believe this is unscripted with how the phone just literally rang in the background. I don't even know if you could hear it, but if you could, uh, yeah, my bad on that. <laughs> Thank you all so much for watching, and I hope you guys have yourselves a great day. And, yeah, till next time, guys. I'll see you all again. Take care.